While Axiom Space, awarded $140 million, delays its first module to 2027, VAST's Haven 1 completed NASA standard testing and targets May 2026 launch. Zero government funding, no ISS dependency. Just hardware moving faster than the official winner. This is in theory, it's happening now. One company burns cash on delays while an outsider builds actual flight hardware. The space station race reveals a brutal truth about who really delivers. Let's dive right in. September 27th, 2024. While space industry insiders tracked Axiom's progress, VAST dropped a bombshell on X. Haven demo build and tests are complete, and it is now undergoing final integration for launch. The accompanying video showed what NASA's favorite contractors hadn't delivered. Actual flight hardware, precision machine structures, integrated power systems, functioning batteries and thrusters, not computer renderings or artist concepts, real metal heading to orbit. Here's the shocking part. VAST wasn't even invited to NASA's commercial LEO Destinations Phase 1 competition. While Axiom, Blue Origin, Northrop Grumman, and Voyager Space split $600 million in government funding, VAST received nothing. Yet they're beating everyone to the launch pad. How is this possible? The strategy behind the speed. The answer reveals a fundamental difference in approach. Axiom designed their modules to attach to the aging ISS first, then detach later to become independent. VAST built Haven 1 as a standalone unit from day one. This single decision eliminated years of complexity. No ISS compatibility testing. No NASA approval cycles for docking procedures with a 30-year-old station. No coordination with international partners managing the ISS. The numbers prove it. VAST targets May 2026. Axiom aims for 2027, assuming no delays. That's a full-year advantage for the company without government funding. But speed without substance means nothing. What exactly did VAST build that passes NASA standard testing? Haven 1 measures 4.4 meters in diameter with 45 cubic meters of habitable space, roughly one-eighth of the ISS. But raw size isn't the story here. The module's efficiency is. It supports four astronauts for 30-day missions and can remain operational for up to two years, hosting four separate crew rotations. SpaceX's Crew Dragon will ferry crews to and from the module, which waits in orbit ready for docking. The interior breaks sharply from traditional space station design. Instead of exposed wiring, equipment racks, and industrial aesthetics, Haven 1 features clean lines with flame-resistant maple finishes and a 1.2-meter panoramic dome window. The designer, Peter Russell Clark, spent nearly two decades at Apple creating retail environments. Critics immediately labeled it a luxury hotel in space. CEO Max Hayat clarified, It's not designed to be a luxury hotel, but we believe that in any environment, if you can feel more comfortable, rest better, and communicate more easily, you'll work more effectively. Research from ISS missions validates this philosophy. Environmental stress, poor lighting, cramped quarters, constant mechanical noise, measurably degrades crew performance over time. Haven 1 addresses these factors with private sleeping quarters, high-speed Starlink internet, and a communal workspace with a fold-out table. These aren't luxuries. They're performance optimizations based on decades of ISS operational data. Haven 1's design reveals VAST's broader strategy. The module includes a microgravity research lab supporting up to 10 payloads simultaneously, opening opportunities for semiconductor manufacturing experiments, pharmaceutical research, and material science. These industries pay premium rates for orbital access. Pharmaceutical companies can test drug crystallization in microgravity. Semiconductor manufacturers can explore production techniques impossible under Earth's gravity. Material scientists can study alloy formation without convection interference. VAST isn't building exclusively for NASA. They're creating a commercial platform that generates revenue from private customers, academic institutions, and international space agencies. This diversified approach means survival doesn't depend on government contracts. This strategy becomes critical when examining NASA's upcoming Phase 2 funding. 
NASA's commercial LEO Destinations Phase 2 focuses on certification and purchasing services from operational stations after the ISS retires post-2030. The anticipated funding pool approaches $1.5 billion distributed among two or three winners. Here's where VAST's timeline creates a decisive advantage. By launching Haven 1 in May 2026 and operating multiple crew missions through 2027 to 2028, they'll possess real operational data when Phase 2 proposals are evaluated. Not projections, not simulations. Actual flight performance metrics. Power system reliability, life support efficiency, crew productivity data, payload success rates. Contrast this with Axiom, which won't achieve an independent station until 2028 or later, potentially after NASA makes Phase 2 selections. Their proposal will rely on ISS attached operations and projected performance rather than independent station data. If Haven 1 performs as designed, VAST could secure $300 to $600 million in Phase 2 awards. Combined with commercial revenue and their SpaceX partnership, this positions them as a long-term market leader. Their ambitions extend far beyond a single module. Haven 1 validates the concept. Haven 2 delivers the full vision. Construction begins in 2028, targeting 2032 completion. The architecture scales dramatically. A 7-meter-wide central Haven core providing 70 cubic meters of living space launched aboard SpaceX's Starship. Eight additional modules, each 3.8 to 4.4 meters wide and 16 meters long, arrive via Falcon Heavy rockets. Total pressurized volume when complete, 1,160 cubic meters. This exceeds the ISS's 932 cubic meters and dwarfs China's Tiangong Station at 340 cubic meters. The engineering sophistication increases proportionally. Solar arrays begin at 20 kilowatts and expand to 86 kilowatts at full capacity, dedicating 40 kilowatts solely to external experiments. For context, the ISS generates about 84 kilowatts total to power the entire station. Life support systems incorporate SpaceX's recycled CO2 scrubbers, enabling crews to remain on orbit for 720 days with minimal resupply. Water and oxygen recycling efficiency significantly exceeds current ISS capabilities, reducing launch costs and improving mission flexibility. Each module connects through dual docking ports for Crew Dragon and cargo vehicles. Advanced shielding protects against micrometeoroids and thermal extremes. A state-of-the-art robotic arm handles maintenance and payload operations. A dedicated airlock supports spacewalks without depressurizing crew areas. Starlink connectivity provides 24-7 high-speed data transmission, critical for modern experiments generating terabytes of data and for crew morale through reliable Earth communication. The 360-degree cupola serves both practical and psychological purposes. Research confirms that Earth views significantly improve crew mental health during long-duration missions, reducing stress and improving performance. Haven 2 doesn't just replace the ISS. It represents a generational leap forward. Understanding VAST's success requires examining Axiom's progress, or lack thereof. Several weeks ago, the FAA granted Axiom's payload, power, and thermal module a favorable payload determination. Axiom announced this regulatory milestone on social media as progress, but regulatory approval to launch and actually launching represent vastly different achievements. Axiom received their $140 million NASA contract years ago. They remain in development on their first module, with launch now targeted for 2027. Their architecture compounds the challenge. The payload, power, and thermal module must attach to the ISS first. Then comes HAB-1 with crew quarters and research facilities. Then an airlock module for spacewalks. Then HAB-2 for additional living space. Finally, a research and manufacturing module. Five modules total, each dependent on the previous component's successful deployment. Axiom's website describes the first module's purpose. Births to the International Space Station and facilitates the transfer of critical infrastructure and payloads. Translation. They plan to salvage equipment from the ISS before it deorbits. This isn't building a replacement. It's scavenging parts from a vessel headed for destruction. The timeline reveals the fundamental problem. With ISS retirement approaching rapidly, attaching one module before deorbit provides minimal value. 
If they can't complete enough modules while the ISS remains operational, their entire integration strategy collapses. Earlier this year, Axiom completed their first mission simulation for the payload, power, and thermal module. That's simulation testing, not the hardware validation VAST has already finished. Axiom possesses genuine capability. They've successfully launched private astronaut missions to the ISS through SpaceX partnerships. They employ experienced personnel and legitimate engineering expertise. The issue isn't competence, it's architectural philosophy. By designing for ISS integration first and independence second, Axiom locked into a complex sequential deployment requiring everything to succeed in order. Each module depends on the previous one. Any delay cascades through the entire timeline. VAST chose the inverse approach. Build a module that functions independently from launch, then scale with lessons learned. Think of it this way. Axiom is constructing a bridge from both sides simultaneously, requiring precise alignment to meet in the middle. VAST built a boat that floats independently, then adds more boats as needed. One approach requires perfection, the other accommodates iteration. These developments don't occur in isolation. China's Tiangong Station achieved operational status in 2021, ending the decades-long ISS monopoly on human spaceflight infrastructure. This forced NASA to extend the ISS lifetime, originally scheduled to end in 2016, to maintain American LEO presence. But extension only buys time. The station ages, maintenance costs escalate, and operational risks increase with each passing year. NASA requires a commercial replacement before Tiangong becomes the only operational station. Whoever delivers first becomes the default American platform for LEO operations, worth billions in long-term government and commercial contracts. China's operational station adds urgency to every delay. When Axiom pushes timelines back, it's not merely a corporate setback, it's a strategic disadvantage in renewed space competition. The pressure affects both companies, but creates opportunities for whoever moves faster. Max Hayat framed the competition clearly. Our number one priority is to become a company that actually owns a space station. A company with a station in orbit that has flown people there, kept them for a while, and brought them safely back to Earth. That's really the race we're in. Not winning NASA contracts, not impressive presentations. Operating a functional station with real crews. By May 2026, if timelines hold, VAST launches Haven 1. By late June 2026, four astronauts dock aboard Crew Dragon for the VAST 1 mission. That's Hayot's finish line. After that, every operational day proves commercial viability. Every successful crew rotation demonstrates reliability. Every completed experiment generates revenue and validation. Meanwhile, Axiom, Blue Origin, and Northrop Grumman continue building. VAST operates. Between now and May 2026, VAST must clear significant milestones. Pressure testing and structural trials conclude by year-end 2024, proving the module withstands vacuum, extreme loads, and thermal cycling. Critical systems testing runs late 2025 through early 2026, covering life support, thermal control, impulse space propulsion, and power systems, including solar array deployment. Early 2026 brings final manufacturing and integration, the Haven 1 lab module, Starlink connectivity hardware, and RF video systems from partners, AnySignal and TRL1. The complete assembly then undergoes full-scale vibration and thermal testing. Mid-2026 delivers qualification trials, acoustic testing simulating launch noise, electromagnetic compatibility verification, and orbital environment simulations. Only after passing everything does Haven 1 integrate with its Falcon 9 launcher for joint SpaceX checks and final NASA FAA safety certification. April or May 2026, pre-launch preparations, fueling, final systems checks, and countdown. This represents extensive testing, but VAST has already completed demo build and initial validation phases the stages typically causing the most delays and design changes. They're not starting the testing process. They're finishing it. NASA designed the commercial LEO destinations program to foster competition and innovation. Four companies received phase one funding to develop concepts. 
competition would theoretically accelerate progress. Yet the fastest progress came from the unfunded company. Vast's trajectory raises questions about NASA's selection process. Did phase one evaluation favor established aerospace contractors over aggressive startups? Did requiring ISS integration, Axiom's key advantage, actually slow replacement timelines? If VAST reaches orbit first and operates successfully, it suggests selection criteria may have overlooked the most viable approach. This doesn't invalidate NASA's strategy. Spreading risk across multiple contractors remains sound policy, but it indicates their assessment might not have identified the fastest path to operational capability. The race to replace the ISS is accelerating, and the leaderboard doesn't match expectations. A company without government funding is outpacing the $140 million contract winner. A standalone module strategy is beating the ISS integrated approach. Speed and simplicity are defeating complexity and caution. Haven 1 launches in May 2026, or it doesn't. If VAST succeeds, they prove commercial space stations work without massive government subsidies. If they fail, Axiom's careful, funded approach looks prescient. Either way, we'll know soon. The hardware is real, the timeline is public, and the countdown has started. Drop a comment. Would you trust a privately built space station enough to visit? Because within a decade, that might not be hypothetical. A company with $0 from NASA just outpaced a $140 million contract winner. VAST's Haven 1 completed NASA standard tests while Axiom pushes deadlines to 2027. This proves something critical. Commercial space moves fastest when it builds independently, not when it depends on aging infrastructure. May 2026, Haven 1 launches. June 2026, first crew docks. By 2028, NASA selects Phase 2 winners, and VAST will have operational data while competitors submit paper proposals. This matters because China's Tiangong is operational right now. Every delay in American commercial stations is lost ground in the space race. The ISS retires after 2030, and we need replacements ready, not promised, but flying. We're 19 months from Haven 1's launch. Between now and then, critical tests determine if VAST delivers or stumbles. We'll track every milestone, every delay, every success. Your turn. Do you think VAST pulls this off on schedule? Or will Axiom's funded approach prove smarter long-term? Drop your prediction in the comments. I read everyone. If you want detailed breakdowns of space developments like this, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Space Hub brings you the technical details and strategic insights behind every major space breakthrough. Like this video if you're rooting for the underdog or think NASA backed the wrong company. The countdown to May 2026 starts now. The race to replace the ISS isn't theoretical anymore. It's hardware, timelines, and companies betting everything on being first. We'll see who crosses the finish line. This is Space Hub, where we cover space breakthroughs that actually matter.